Welcome to Discovering. It's time for part two of our weekend winter road trip. We'll catch the rest of the dog sled races and stop in to see how the Big Freeze Ice Fishing Derby went. So this year we decided to use something called the Fish Donkey app. Stick around, it's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Last week we left off with the UP200 teams departing from their Wetmore checkpoint and heading for Grand Marais. The Midnight Run teams left Chatham on their 36 mile trek to the finish line at the Ojibwe Casino. I left Chatham headed for the same destination. M28 was closed just past the casino, certainly not an uncommon situation for 28 in the winter. It wasn't long and the midnight run finishers began to cross the finish line. I just finished the midnight run. Um, yesterday we started at around 8.45ish and uh, we got in around midnight or more like 1am. Um, the first 45 miles were pretty good but the especially the last five miles in Chatham were terrible with uh, almost like blizzard conditions with a really high wind and oh, it was crazy but um, yeah and then we got about five hours of sleep in Chatham and we were on the road again so we just finished another 35 miles which went great except uh, I hit a tree pretty hard um, right in the beginning and broke my sled but we managed to finish and all the dogs are, are doing great looking good some of them are ready to do another 20. <laughs> Uh, the first leg went pretty good until the end. Um, it was pretty much a blizzard in the middle of a field and the dogs just kind of had to find where the trail was hard and follow that and the scent of other dogs and stuff. There was points where I couldn't even see my lead dogs because the wind and snow was so bad. And then today went pretty good. I was pretty toasty and um, uh, we hit a tree. 
today, <laughs> but everyone was okay, so we finished strong, and I'm pretty proud of my dog, so. The midnight run was done, and I was heading for Grand Marais. Hopefully in time to catch the UP 200 mushers arriving. And arrive they did. <laughs> one by one, teams of wound up excited dogs showed up with their conductors in tow. The UP 200 racers left Marquette more than 40 hours ago. They first traveled 68 miles from Marquette to the first unassisted checkpoint in Wetmore, where they fed and bedded down their teams. After a short rest, they traveled on to the halfway point here at Grand Marais for 53 miles of scenic trails along the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. Here they will rest for a bit before making the same trek, but in reverse. Afternoon turns to evening, and then to late evening. The streets of Grand Marais have gone quiet. A non-stop parade of snowmobiles has all but stopped. Then quietly, from out of the dark, a team of dogs and their musher approach the starting line. And, just like that, they're off. Cheers from now only a few faithful fans as they wish the mushers well on their return journey. Sometime later, another. <laughs> and then another. The almost silent commotion builds as it brings out more and more weary spectators. The musher silently pass through Grand Marais. Around a couple of bends, past the still burning bonfires, and off into the darkness. The seven hours back to Wetmore for another rest. And then the final stretch back to Marquette where a crowd of anxious fans will be waiting to see who will appear first. Well, day two comes to a close. It's midnight in Grand Marais. The temperature went up to 15, but the wind started blowing again, so it's not nice out. A big thanks to the guys in the corner with the bonfire. You made my whole night. I wasn't particularly looking forward to another night in the Jeep, but I did take some comfort knowing that while I was in there wrestling with sleep, there are a bunch of mushers who will be standing on a set of runners for the next seven hours or so on their journey to Wetmore. Sunday morning, time to leave Grand Marais and make my way to Marquette for the finish. My night in the Jeep Motel, not so good. It did come with a continental breakfast though, some chips, a half a muffin I found in my coat pocket, and an energy drink. A right turn in Sini, the Sini stretch, a stop for coffee, and a quick check at one of the road crossings. Thank you for being here. You're welcome, appreciate it. And I was at Lakin and Land. Lincoln and Land is the ultimate place to watch the teams pass by. A warm fire and lots of hospitality. Thanks, Tom. Oh, oh, oh.
As I headed back toward Marquette, back to where it all began a few days ago, I thought back of all the pieces. To start in downtown Marquette. Three, two, one. He's Eileen from Ray, Minnesota. Our first musher for the 2022 running of the UP 200 sled dog race. We are back and back at it. And the monumental job it must be to close off what's probably the busiest street in the UP for a dog sled race, and then fill it with snow. Chatham and Wetmore, and all that goes on there. The Ojibwa Casino. And of course, Grand Marais, and all the folks there. All the trails in between, and all it takes to get and keep them in perfect race condition. The trails are in great shape. They've been packed down, we've got a lot of snow. The trail crew has been out for the last several weeks. They've gotten it groomed. Then we had some warm weather, which was perfect because it settled the snow. They've got a good base. All the tireless workers guiding mushers at road crossings and helping at checkpoints. And during the cold, through all hours of the day and night. Veterinarians every step of the way, making sure that the dogs are always good to go. Law enforcement and medical staff available at a moment's notice wherever and whenever needed. The organizers behind the scenes that make it all come together. At the same time, the Jack Pine 30 is going on near Gwyn. Of course, the great support from all of the sponsors. And the list wouldn't be complete without mentioning all of the fans. They line the streets of Marquette for the start. You'll find them along the trail in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. You'll find them in Chatham, at all the road crossings, at the Ojibwa Casino, in Grand Marais, no matter the time. We'll find them at Lake and Land. And of course, waiting in Lower Harbor to cheer on and support the mushers as they return home. The UP 200 Midnight Run and Jack Pine 30 races are a great tribute to the many volunteers without whom this would not happen. It's also a great tribute to the dogs and of course the mushers that come from all over the country to spend their weekend here in the Upper Peninsula. This year we have teams, we've got some from Alaska, we've got them from, I think there's one from Colorado, one from Washington State I believe, several from Minnesota, Wisconsin area, a couple from Michigan, so we've gotten them from all over. The sad part for this year is we've not been able to welcome our Canadian teams just because of the border crossings, but we're sure they will be back next year. A lot of enthusiastic mushers who have come from all over the place. Several of our teams have gotten the Iditarod under their belt. We have teams that have been returning and have done this race before. We've got several champions in the field of mushers this week. All three races have very good teams in them. Well, the end had arrived. Another year of the UP 200 Midnight Run Jack Pine 30 Sled Dog Races was in the books. For an unprecedented ninth time, the winner of the 2022 UP 200 Sled Dog Races was Ryan Anderson. UP 200 champion, Ryan Anderson. An amazing run and an amazing accomplishment. Not just for Ryan, but for all the teams. Ryan wants to give us some words and tell us about the trail, and he will. Um, number one is Doc Care, and he's got to go take care of some Well, with the races wrapping up, it was time to leave Marquette and head towards home. After two nights of sleeping in the Jeep, I can't straighten up, I can't walk, and I can't wait to sleep in something other than the Jeep. After night one, I can tell you that the back of a Jeep Cherokee is approximately six inches shorter than me. On night two, I opted for simply reclining the front seat back and sleeping there. Seemed all right at first, but I think the only thing that fell asleep was my leg. For a concerned amount of time, I might add. 
So I was out of Marquette and on my way to Gladstone for the final stop on my weekend adventure, the Big Freeze Ice Fishing Derby. My last stop for the weekend, the Big Freeze Ice Fishing Derby in Gladstone. Combine catch and release with a fishing tournament phone app and it makes for a pretty unique way to put on a fishing tournament. So this is our first annual ice fishing derby for Visit Escanaba. We called it the Big Freeze and we had an awesome turnout. This year we're proud to announce that we have Delta County Search and Rescue here. They are the event volunteers and all of the money from this ice fishing derby will actually be given to them to help support their cause. Contestants are fishing for Northern Pike, walleye and perch. There are 17 different categories for prizes and we are also doing wild card draw and door prizes. So this year we decided to use something called the Fish Donkey app. The cool thing about that app is that the contestants can keep track of where they fall throughout the day and it's got a live leaderboard so you can see pictures being uploaded and the prize categories shifting as people are catching more fish. So that's really an uh, interesting part of using the app is kind of just knowing where you are in comparison. And it also allows contestants to catch and release instead of having to bring all of the fish back to shore. So I'm going to start out by announcing our largest northern pike. The winner gets a 10 inch auger value of $570. And that goes to Eric Bartle. So in order to participate in our ice fishing derby, contestants went ahead and they uploaded the Fish Donkey app onto their phone. It has all of the boundary maps, rules, regulations for the tournament, kind of the overview, contact information if they have additional questions, and um, registration happens right on the app. We had all registration um, prior to check-in, so everyone just came to the Gladstone Beach House and we handed out bump boards, hoodies for the event, meal tickets, drink tickets, and bracelets. And then everyone was free to head out on the ice. Third largest perch goes to Alex Jack. You want to make sure that you take two pictures. One picture with you and the fish, so people can see that you're the one that caught it. And the second one is on the standard measuring boards that we had for the tournament to make sure that everyone has the same exact measurement and that everything's fair and square. In both of those pictures we need proof that you have an event bracelet on and that just allows us to know that you just caught the fish and kind of eliminates the chance of people cheating. That giant box over there with otter on it. Make sure you pose for a picture. We have an awesome prize structure. We have over $3,300 worth of prizes to give out and everything was either purchased or donated from local businesses. All right, so we're starting with the Grand Slam. Everybody's Well, that was it. My weekend road trip came to a close and I was homeward bound. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovery. <laughs>